Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and with the summer months on the horizon, I thought it'd be fun to dip into the casual elegance of upscale coastal decor. And in my opinion, no one does it more beautifully and effortlessly as Pottery Barn. Every year, they never cease to amaze with their mastery of cozy coastal cottage chic, incorporating weathered woods and rattan, crisp whites with neutral tones and textures, accent with beautiful summer blues and pinks, or as the perfect foundation to bring in vibrant greens with plants or accessories. And of course, plenty of oversized natural elements from the sea and land. So let's see what we can do to get a little bit of this look for less, starting with this Malibu hand-woven seagrass mirror inspiration. To make this piece, I'll be using a Dollar Tree round mirror, a bundle of poly rope, some Mod Podge and craft paint in the colors Burnt Umber and Territorial Beige. First, I disassembled the mirror, and I'll be using this Dollar Tree mirror for illustration, but you can do this same technique with any shape mirror, large or small, that you may already have on hand, pick up second hand, or buy at other retailers. Once I had the frame separated, I attached the rope to the back with some hot glue, and then proceeded to wrap the rope around the frame. Every three or four wraps, I pushed the rope tightly together, and then added a little hot glue, and then just kept going. Once the frame was covered in the rope, I made a mix of two parts Mod Podge to one part of the Territorial Beige paint, then applied this mix to the rope, making sure to get into all those cracks and crevices. By adding the Mod Podge to the paint, it makes the paint more sheer, almost like a glaze. So this combo will make the rope look more like woven seagrass by adding in some brown tones while still allowing some of those golden hues to show through. It will also change the finish on the rope so that it no longer has a plastic look. And you can see the difference here on the back side. To add some dimension, I again added Mod Podge to some of the burnt umber colored paint and applied that sparingly on the rope, just making some dashes with the tip of my paintbrush. Then I blended that with one of my dry sponge brushes. Once dry, I reattached the mirror using E6000 glue. And this is how the project turned out. Seagrass is such a beautiful and understated way to imbue that coastal vibe, and this poly rope and paint hack is a great way to achieve a faux seagrass look. Bamboo and rattan are two other materials which can instantly create that upscale coastal vibe, and some of the best sources for craftable bamboo or rattan are placemats or table runners. One placemat can supply a good quantity of material, and you can buy singles at places like Walmart or Target for about $3 each. But I find the best buys are at Ross or Marshalls, where you can typically find four packs for about five bucks. And all you need to do is snip off the material and threads holding the placemats together. To remove any remaining threads, I use a razor and also some sandpaper, and for this project, I'll be using the wider pieces of the bamboo. To make the bamboo more flexible, I took a pan of warm water and soaked the strips for about an hour until the pieces were pliable. Once softened, I removed the strips from the water and towel dried. And you can see how much more flexible they are now. So from here, I was able to take a Dollar Tree cylinder vase and wrap one of the pieces around. And what I want is for the uh, ends to butt together. So I took note of where I needed to cut and then snipped with scissors. Next, I took the strip and circled it around, overlapping the ends, and taped to hold it in shape and let the pieces dry like that, and I did that for all the pieces. Once dry, I untaped the pieces and attached a short scissor cut piece of natural color masking tape to one end. I then butted the two ends together and carefully wrapped it around with the tape. While continuing to hold the ends in place, I took an additional scissor cut strip of the tape and reinforce the first piece of tape on each side, and then once again in the middle over the top. From here, I took more of the Mod Podge and Territorial Beige Craft Paint Mix and painted over the masking tape. This helped the masking tape blend into the bamboo. Once the paint was dry, I took four of the rings and slid them onto the vase. You can add a little E6000 here if you like to keep the rings in place. And then that's it. You can add some sand and candles to create a beachy candle holder or use as a vase to hold some tropical greenery. 
Bookends with nautical motifs are another way to add coastal charm to your decor, and places like Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Pop Shelf, and thrift stores are great for picking up ceramic figures, wood cutouts, and other trinkets to easily create themed bookends. To make cut pieces of scrap wood, my wonderful neighbor Dennis cut these into 3 inch and 7 inch pieces for me, and then I dry brushed with some white chalk paint. Once dry, I glued the two pieces together with wood glue. Then once the glue was set, I added these nautical jute balls from Dollar Tree to each. And I used hot glue to attach. The result is classic rustic elegance, like something you'd see holding much loved books read through many generations in a Nantucket coastal cottage. Now, if you don't have any scrap wood laying around, here's another option using Dollar Tree materials, including ceramic seashells, wood boxes, arrow signs, and some rocks. I could have used the wood planks here that Dollar Tree sells in packs of six for $1.25, but since they're only six inches high and I needed the back piece to be taller to sit higher than my figure, I opted for the arrows. Plus, I had them already sitting in my stash, so I measured and cut them to seven and one half inches. To give the bookends some weight, I took the boxes and taped the cutout in the drawer with duct tape, and then filled the drawer with rocks. Next, I added some wood glue to the sides and replaced the drawer. I want the cutout to be on the bottom when the bookends are finished, so I positioned the box accordingly and added some wood glue to the side and also some hot glue for an immediate hold and attached the wood plank. From here, I dry brushed the entire piece with some white chalk paint, then just glued on the ceramic piece. Since I'm using Type Bond for my wood glue and it also works on ceramics, I use that. But if you're using regular wood glue, E6000 would also be a good option. And then here is the finished project in a crisp, bright white to hold all of your beach and pool worthy reeds this summer. Now, if you're lucky enough to live near or often visit a seaside community, then you probably have good opportunities to find naturally occurring decorative pieces like shells and driftwood, naturally worn smooth by the sea and bleached by the sun. But here are some alternatives for the rest of us, starting with some homemade driftwood. I found these chunky pieces of broken branch at a park near my house. You wanna to try to find the pieces where the bark is gone or peeling off. To help nature along, I filled a bucket with water and added a cup of bleach. After washing the branches and peeling off as much of the bark as I could, I put the branches in the bleach. I then placed the bucket out of the way and let the branches soak for several days. However, since my bucket wasn't big enough to submerge the entire branch, I did flip them to the other side once a day. My intent was threefold. One, to continue softening and loosening the bark. Two, to further bleach the already exposed wood. And three, to kill off any little critters that may have made a home in the log. Each day, I also removed any of the bark that had further loosened and found that hitting the bark with a hammer to break it up was helpful. Now, since nature had done a lot of the work already, I found that I only had to soak my branches for about four days to get the desired results. However, depending on the size, condition, and your desired results, your soak time may vary. If you do go longer than four days, it's probably a good idea to drain your bucket and add fresh water and bleach. I love the way these turned out. I think these pieces create natural sculptures and not only look great with coastal decor, but also seems to complement almost every other decor, including transitional, contemporary, rustic, boho, and even modern. In addition to driftwood type pieces, Pottery Barn is also big on oversized coral and shell pieces. So I took inspiration from here to transform this Dollar Tree garden bowl into a similar piece using some caulk, a comb, and a bowl of water. I'll be using the comb to create the design, so I cut it down into smaller pieces with wire snips. Next, I took the caulk and applied it to the outside of the bowl. Then using wet fingers, I spread it all around the surface. Once the exterior was covered, I took a large wipes canister and placed the bowl on top. Then I took a piece of the comb and began making the design, gently dragging the comb through the wet caulk to create grooves in the surface. I removed any excess caulk after each swipe. I did this all around the bowl and then allowed the caulk to completely dry. Once dry, I painted the bowl inside and out with some chalk paint mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio with some Dollar Tree spackle. I also thinned the combo with a little water to maximize spreadability and make it thin enough to kind of hug the grooves without filling them in. Once the outside was painted and dry, I painted the interior of the bowl with the same chalk paint and spackle mix. And then that's it. 
just like that, a Dollar Tree bowl, along with a little caulk, paint, and spackle, can be transformed into a coral-inspired decorative piece. To create a spiny coral, I use a Dollar Tree whisk and one of the wood drawers. I cut the top of the whisk, then used hot glue to create the spiny bumps. Once all the branches were finished, I painted it with the same chalk and spackle mixture, again getting the paint into all those little nooks and crannies. To make a base for the coral, I placed some floral foam in the box drawer, then gave the box a quick dry brush with the chalk paint. From here, I slid the handle into the foam through the cutout in the box, then used hot glue to seal around the hole, as well as create some bumps on the handle, then painted over those with the spackle paint. Another fun coral piece, this time done in all white, but it can be easily changed out by staining the base and or painting the coral another color. And now here is an even more fun coral piece because it lights up. To make my version of Pottery Barn's light up sea urchin, I use one of these spiky balls and a small globe vase. I showed regular white craft paint here, but I actually changed over to white chalk paint. To make, I first cut off the top of the ball with scissors, cutting out those first three or so rows of spikes. Then I cut a slit down the back. Next, I placed the globe vase in the ball, stretching the rubber of the ball around the glass. I pulled the two ends together in the back and it stays pretty well, but you could secure with some E6000 glue. Once the ball was completely covering the glass, I began painting the background with the paint, leaving the points of the little spikes exposed since I wanted the light of the candle to glow through that translucent material. And then, like I mentioned, I did switch over from the white craft paint to the white chalk paint. And then here's our little sea urchin all lit up. You could also paint over the spikes if you prefer all white and the light will still come through, but I just thought it would be fun to keep the blue. It kind of looks like a light bright or one of those ceramic trees with the mini lights. Here's another great DIY using one of the Dollar Tree globe vases. This time I'm using the larger one and a recycled can from canned chicken. I painted the can a tan color and glued the vase to the top with E6000. Next, I took one of the Dollar Tree willow wreaths and cut that into pieces of varying sizes from about four to six inches. Using hot glue, I attached the pieces to the can. Next, I took some jute twine and wrapped it around the twigs. From here, you can add some sand and a votive candle to make a lantern, or alternately add some stones and a succulent. Either or, it's an inexpensive way to bring a little upscale coastal vibes to your decor. I hope you'll join me later in the summer as we do more upscale inspired and upscale dupe videos. In the meantime, please check out our dupe videos we've already made, which you can link to here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.